electronics are housed inside a metal chassis. This model's chassis is made from a sheet of steel that's less than a millimeter thick. A computer-guided machine called a turret punch cuts the contour and pierces a series of holes and slots for the controls. A worker then uses a computer-guided bender to shape the chassis cutout. Elsewhere in the factory, the amp circuit board takes shape. It'll go inside the chassis. A computer-guided drill makes tiny holes in a laminate board that's coated with copper. The holes are for the board's various electronic components. An automated silkscreen printer now applies a diagram of the electrical circuitry in ammonia-resistant ink. Then the board goes into a machine called an etcher, which uses ammonia to dissolve the copper coating. Copper shielded by the ink diagram stays intact. The machine then rinses the board with sodium hydroxide to dissolve the ink, leaving behind just the circuitry diagram in copper. This copper configuration will conduct electricity to the circuit board components. Automated machines insert the smaller components. Here's what that looks like in slow motion and at actual speed. As a worker provides counter pressure, a machine folds over the leads of some larger components to secure them to the board until they're soldered. Workers then install large, irregular parts by hand. Among them, the sockets that hold the tubes which power the amp. The ribbon connectors that join different areas of the circuit board. And the wires that connect external components to the board. The factory permanently affixes everything in one shot, using a process called wave soldering. The circuit board runs through a bath of molten tin and lead. In just a couple of seconds, the liquefied metal hardens, bonding the components securely. Back to that steel chassis we saw them bend into shape earlier. Since then, they've painted it black. With a silkscreen printer, they apply the control markings, logos and other information. They begin the final assembly. First, they screw the circuit board into the chassis. Then they plug the preamp tube into the appropriate socket on the board. This tube boosts the electrical signal coming from the guitar and feeds it to the output tubes, which up the voltage level, making the signal stronger and louder. After installing control knobs and covering the bottom of the chassis, workers insert and clamp the output tubes the number of which usually varies according to how many watts of power the amp is designed to produce. The chassis housing the electronics goes into a box. This factory builds its boxes from high-grade Baltic birch plywood, but other companies often use domestic plywood, MDF, or even plastic. After covering the box in leatherette and adding corner reinforcements, they install the two remaining components, the spring reverb, and the speaker. As the guitar's electrical signal runs through the amp, part of the electrical signal diverts to one end of the spring, vibrating it. The spring's other end picks up this vibration and sends it back through the amp as a delayed signal. That reverberation combines with the original signal to produce a bigger sound.